And I've experienced it as well, but there's a lot of strategies that you can use in order to combat this. So one strategy that I would suggest is redoing your listing, doing everything to the T. Every box that is given to you in the Airbnb platform needs to be checked off. Like, don't skip no boxes. But I'm on my way. They're like, you're going to come? I'm on my way. Not only did I refund them their cleaning fee, I cleaned it. I brought them snacks and extra drinks. I left them wine. And I sorry for the inconvenience card that I have on deck. A lot of people don't talk about these. Sorry for the inconvenience cards come in handy when guests are dealing with an issue. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Osei back at it again. What the? Okay, stop. So Winter Airbnb had launched a new winter release on their platform, which changed a lot of the algorithm that's going into the platform. It's more focused on the retention of guests now because they're noticing that a lot of hosts are not putting a lot of effort into their homes and they're pushing them to hotels again, right? And a lot of people are not going to get away with the things that they got into the industry with. So your quality matters, how you're responding matters even more than before is what I'm saying. In order for you to become a super host, you have to be on top of your game, good. So when your guests are coming in and leaving reviews, you wanna make sure that they're leaving really good reviews and you wanna make sure that you're in communication with them because let's say that you have a guest that didn't have a really good experience checking in, you can always communicate and say, hey, I understand that you didn't have a good time checking in. However, we would love if you can be a bit more compassionate about leaving a five-star review of the overall quality because it will really dig our listing and we won't be able to, you know, run effectively and continue to host amazing guests like you or something like that. You know, you want to make sure that you are adding the effort because a lot of people got into this space super quick, didn't really put any effort into their business and now they're really, really struggling. And I've experienced it as well, but there's a lot of strategies that you can use in order to combat this. So one strategy that I would suggest is redoing your listing, doing everything to the T. Every box that is given to you in the Airbnb platform needs to be checked off. Like, don't skip no boxes. If you're a, a current host, you'll understand what I mean. The your space box, the listing description boxes, the all of those extra boxes that are in your under your listing description tab needs to be filled. Go to insights on Airbnb, go to opportunities, go to the drop down and go to on the side of it, it's going to slide. It's going to have different circles with percentages on them. You want to make sure that you're looking at all of those percentages to make sure that you fulfilled all of those percentages out. Don't leave anything open. Don't leave anything unchecked. Another thing that I would suggest that a lot of hosts we don't like to do, but hear me out, is open up your listing to the smart pricing if you're not getting booked. Because Airbnb is going to suggest this price and they're going to push you back up into the algorithm because your listing not only just has great reviews, but now it's priced at a great price. And with smart pricing, if you are in the Airbnb space, you're appealing to the guests because it's cheaper than all the other platforms you use. If you're someone that is currently using Price Labs, I use Price Labs to kind of price out my listings. You can just shut, off, shut it off for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? For like a week. Another thing I want you guys to pay attention to is that there's a lot of supply and not a lot of demand in this season. I am still doing my research on how much it's going to pick up and the traveling rates and everything that's going to be happening going into next year. But you want to make sure that you are kind of tapping into midterm rentals. However, you want to be careful because when the seasons pick back up and if you're still dealing with the midterm rental, you're going to be missing out on some money. You have a furnished accommodation business. You do not have an Airbnb business. So there's about 13 to 14 different platforms that you can tap into. A lot of people don't know about these platforms, but there's multiple platforms that your property can be listed on that you're able to make more money on. I'm sure that you are either okay, you're able to pay your rent, but you're not really making as much as you would like to right now because it's a slow season at Airbnb, but it's super, super slow because there's more supply than there is demand. So going into this new season, play your cards right. If you have 
a unit that is almost, the lease is almost up, pay attention. How much are you making? Because if y'all remember, if you were following me, I posted that I was getting rid of one of my favorite units. When it comes to a shift in the market, I always know how to pivot. And I always do it right before it's too late. Like my spirit won't even sleep if I know that I got to get rid of something before it's too late. That was a $2,400 expense that I would have had to cover along with my mortgage, along with my rents, and along with managing my properties, right? So you have to be very, very intentional when you get into this business because it's a hit or miss. You're taking a risk regardless of what you, it's business. There's high seasons, there's low seasons. It's coming from a homeowner slash realtor slash somebody that understands the benefit of ownership, okay? Getting into the, the arbitrage model is a beautiful way to build capital quickly, but it's not a beautiful way to sustain you in seasons like this. Because let's say that, you do have an arbitrage unit and arbitrage is you renting out a property that you don't own and all of that. The difference between ownership and arbitrage is you can pivot in ownership. You can put a long-term tenant in ownership. You can go to the midterm route in ownership. You can, you know, there's multiple, you can turn your house into an event space. You can host different baby showers. You can allow insurance companies to come and take over your space. Different people that need housing for their clients. You're a furnished accommodation company. So if you operate that way, then you'll be good, which is why I had to tap in and become a realtor because imagine purchasing a property that you decide to live in or you decide to house hack and the other three are either Airbnbs, long-terms or midterm rentals, but you still have this property that you can live in rent-free, mortgage-free. You feel what I'm saying? So getting into the Airbnb space is a beautiful way to get into it. But in this season, how there's so much supply everywhere, you have to find new ways on how to pivot and do your business. Something that I teach a lot is market research. Like, okay, in a season like this, yes, there's always going to be a slow season on the platform. However, don't you want to make the most out of that slow season? Yes. Everyone does. Another thing is become a premier host on VRBO. Nobody talks about this. Like how you can be a super host on Airbnb, you can also be a premier host on VRBO. And by being a premier host, you have the ability to get your property booked for more. I charge more on VRBO than I do on Airbnb, right? VRBO is for more like seasoned travelers, travelers that want more protection, that like more luxury things. That's what I've noticed. And I get booked on there a lot. I've In this slow season, I've been booked more on VRBO than I have on Airbnb. Believe it or not, a lot of the, a lot of the hosts that are on the platform now, a lot of them are going to start leaving because they just started it and threw the, the listings together and didn't really have a business model around it. And the ones that are in it for the long haul are the ones that are going to survive, are the ones that are going to benefit the most, are the ones that are not going to give up because they believe in the platform and they believe in what they've already made. Another thing I really want you guys to do as well, managing multiple listings. A few of them are luxury and a few of them are more on the lower end side. Do two different profiles. Do an admin account and do a different account. Create two different accounts, two different phone numbers, two different emails so that you can be able to run this property how you want to run it and run these properties and have the best reviews on these properties. Because whatever reviews that you get from the low budget properties are going to affect your main properties. And if you get three, four star reviews here, then drop your five star review experience. So, you know, separate your listings, make sure that they're not together so that you're not missing out on opportunity and make sure that you are paying attention to what's going on. You are running a hospitality business. This is not a circus. You are running a hotel. So you're not about to be going back and forth with your with your guests. You're not going to be rude to your guests. You're going to be pleasant. You're going to understand how customer service works. You're going to be a nice person. You're going to be kind. These are human beings that are paying to come and spend time at your location, at your establishment. So you need to have good customer service. You need to respond at a prompt time. You need to respond with kindness. Even if they're being rude to you, respond with kindness because they already paid you. So they can be rude all day. Miss Ma'am, you're not getting a refund. I already have your money, so I'll be nice to you all day, okay? <laughs> what I've learned is you can have a guest at your Airbnb and things can be going totally wrong. The water can be cold. 
they could be totally wrong, but how you respond, how you react, what, how you bring a solution to the problem, these are the things that they're going to talk about when they're leaving you a five-star review. I had a cleaner issue. They went MIA. No, nothing, right? I don't even know if they're still alive at this point. Like, um, you know, the, the like the house is not clean. Like, I don't want to stay here. Da, da, da. I said, I'm on my way. They're like, you're going to come? I'm on my way. Not only did I refund them their cleaning fee, I cleaned it. I brought them snacks and extra drinks. I left them wine and I sorry for the inconvenience card that I have on deck. A lot of people don't talk about these. Sorry for the inconvenience cards come in handy when guests are dealing with an issue, right? So these are things that people don't tell you, but there's times when you have to step in. It's your business. It's your reviews. I used to be in multi-level marketing, so I understand how customers work, but I feel like Airbnb really teaches you the importance of striving for greatness in a way where it really does show in your reviews. Like, People will not come or come to your house or come to your establishment because of how other people feel about it. And we all know that. But to be in the business of striving for five-star reviews, it's not easy. Some people will still give you 4.7, 4.6. Just have to be attentive to what's going on in the industry. It's real estate. It's a form of real estate. And I'm not going to be one of those hosts that don't tell you the truth. Like Airbnb is very difficult right now. So if this is a time that you're trying to get in, just wait until like, the ending of January, beginning of February, things will pick back up. I also want to say, if you're looking for a home to purchase for Airbnb, I want you to also remember, like, this is also is turning back into a buyer's market. And the reason why is because a lot of sellers are giving a lot of incentives for first-time home buyers, for buyers in general. I called a builder the other day, and they are giving $30,000 towards closing costs. Uh, they're buying down interest rates. They're doing a lot because it's turning back into a buyer's market. If you're looking to buy in San Antonio, Dallas, Texas, or Austin, I have the best realtors that I am close to that actually know what they're doing in Dallas and also know what they're doing in Austin. I also know what I'm doing in San Antonio and partnered with amazing people here as well. So if you are looking to purchase property, please let me know. Accepting new clients and yeah, I love y'all. Happy New Year! Bye! Thank mm -hmm. you.